Hello traders, this is uh, Anka Metcalf with Trade Out Loud and I thought that today would be a very good day to take a look at the markets. I have a little bit of time off and I could share some of my insight with all of you guys. Uh, so here we are uh, doing a review for the futures market for this week. Now remember the, the, market, the futures market is closed today. Uh, it was actually the European session that was on and the futures, the US futures market was closed. So we're back into action tomorrow. And I thought I'd share some of my ideas and my trading ideas for this upcoming week with those of you that are interested in day trading or even swing trading the futures market. So let me do a little review and let's see what we have going on last week. And based on last week's trade decisions, uh, let's see where we're going on from here. All right, so this is a chart of uh, the uh, Dow and this is the M&E Dow. So the, the candle that you guys see here is today's candle. This is Friday uh, candle that came in to tap into the 20 SMA and also into an area of prior resistance spot. So you can see here that throughout one, two, three, four, about five days, we held into this area before we broke out. So we're back revisiting the prior breakout spot, which is very significant because if this area is going to hold, and if we manage to rotate higher, then we have more velocity for uh, this upcoming week, and therefore we can see a new high uh, into the market. Uh, what I totally like to do is especially at the beginning of the week I like to look at the weekly charts and right here we're identifying a sandwich so what that means is that we have a green bar we have a red bar and then today's very slight trading activity from the Asian session and from the London session has not been extremely bullish but hey we didn't sell off so we're uh, pretty much 26 points up relatively flat for the trading day uh, I'm still going to take into consideration this prior candle right here. So the, for this week, if the price is going to trade over 31,117 above this candle high right here, we are going to start engaging in uh, engaging higher. The next target that uh, we are going to look for is obviously going to be uh, the, the, this is the day trading target, the 31,148, uh, which is this prior high. And afterwards, we're going to be looking for a target into the um, 31, 341. So we do have a tradable void all, all around into that area. And therefore, continuation for the rest of the week into the 31,500. So we do still have a lot of room for the upside. Now, what happens if we start breaking down and when can we look for a short? Well, uh, things are pretty much set right now. And if we start breaking 500, which is which definitely represents uh, last week's low, all under 500, we could start looking for a very cautious type of short because this short is not going to be favorable with because we don't have any downtrends. So therefore, we're going to be looking probably for a scalp that may pull back into the uh, 10 exponential moving average into the 30,100. And also, I would like to take a quick look on the hourly chart for those of you that want to watch the markets in the overnight trading session. So for the whole entire last week, what we had going on was a massive range, massive range that uh, had support uh, into the 30,600 area. Um, you could see it right here, multiple taps into this area. If we go far back uh, two Mondays ago, you could see this prior high right here that also uh, created support for the whole entire range. Obviously, we break above the range, we're going to continue higher. We break below the range, like I said, we're going to be cautiously um, very moderate bearish biased for a pullback and the target is not going to be, like I said, that significant. It's going to be a rather small target, probably somewhere in the vicinity of the 200 to 250 spot. Uh, what I'm seeing right now, and uh, obviously, you know, there's no price action. The stock market was closed, so we don't have any uh, kind of catalyst that pushed the market in one way or another, and we did totally lack any kind of economic releases. Now, this upcoming week, you guys know that uh, we have kickstart earnings season on uh, Friday, and we had three uh, major financials that reported JP Morgan City and Wells Fargo. Uh, and uh, we are going to go full throttle this week. We also have, guess what, some NASDAQ components that uh, will start delivering uh, some uh, reports. So that means that 
we may have a little bit more pressure uh, in all the indices. So not only, let's say, in the mini S&P, which is financial rich, but also in NASDAQ. Let's see, uh, you know, we do have earnings from Netflix. Uh, this week and uh, what I'm seeing here is that we do have a lot of pressure point uh, all the way into the 850 to 900 area if we start breaking above this resistance high into the 880 we can start expanding higher but let's not forget that any kind of setup that develops within this massive range that we have going on into the one hour chart is going to be relatively difficult to trade and higher odds of stopping out on smaller time frames so that for my uh, bias for this entire week will be uh, expanding to higher time frames and taking trades on a little bit uh, higher time frames. So that means I'm not going to be very focused and keen on using one minute or two minute bars or tick charts are totally out of the question for me this week uh, due to the earnings, upcoming earnings, but I will attack on more of the five and the 15 minute charts and even the 30 and the, uh, even the 30 uh, 30 minute charts or or the 60 minutes so therefore the one hour if we start breaking over this high right here like i said we do have a lot of room for progression higher now let's take it to the mini smp we're going to look uh at the macro level and then we're going to expand a little bit to um the um uh my, we're going to look at the micro level and then we're going to expand to the macro level a little bit so as you can see, we're still trading under a lot of pressure. And this pressure is a little bit pronounced than what we had in the Dow because the Dow was a little flirting into the range back again. So the price was getting back into the range where the mini S&P is not. It's still trading below the range. So that means that these lows right here may create a lot of resistance and divergence for price. We're also on the early chart and a little bit in an oversold area right here into the 80s. And if these 80s prove that they really mean business and the price is really going to get rejected from the spot, then we could see another leg down. So uh, I would like to take a quick look onto the weekly chart. So the weekly chart, as you can see here, we're dealing with the same possible sandwich formation. So what that means is that if we're going to start trading above this high right here into the 2022 20, or so, we're going to start blasting higher and we do have a lot of room for progression higher not only the high which is that 3824 but we do have a lot of room to go further into the 3876 and that is going to be the next resistance high let's take a look at nasdaq and like i said um i saw netflix amongst the companies that will report earnings this week so uh, these um, earnings that uh, will present themselves these weeks, they're going to be catalyst for the uh, futures indices that we're going to be trading. Again, you could look from the macro level, from the weekly structure that we're still dealing with the same sandwich. We start trading above uh, 13,140, then we're going to start moving higher. Uh, and obviously, uh, we're going to be looking for targets. Wow, we and the targets are way out there. Uh, the target first one of the first targets probably that uh, is going to be for uh, for a day trading target or even let's say a moderate swing trading target uh, is going to be into the 13,200 and then after that 13,400 so these are the new uh, two projections for higher let's take a look at Russell Russell was uh, one of the strongest in this you can see right now that it's into a continuation pattern we haven't had a red bar to finish the week so we did have a little bit of a pullback and we're still moving higher i think that the line in the sand is going to be 2050 we break below 2050 we're going to start pulling back as long as we hold these highs we are still going to start projecting higher and this is also part of the january effect let's take a look right now at oil and there is a lot of there there's a lot of things that are happening in oil right now one of the major things is that we're having this topping effect into the 200 simple moving average not only that but we have resistance that is uh, deriving from these lows right here that you guys see and these are from 2019 so the price may see a little bit of rejection into this point if the price is going to be rejected off at this point there's a very strong chance that the price may be getting ready for a pullback the pullback may be into the 49.50 to 49.30 and perhaps a flurry down to the bottoming tail right into the 47.78 if we start trading above next last week's high which is uh 
53.93 so anything over 95 will the price will start progressing higher and it's going to chop around a little bit into these resistance highs right here so there's a lot of resistance from this uh, very choppy price action that we had in 2019 let's take a look at gold gold is looking very interesting uh right now and the reason why i like it is because we had a top into the 200 sma not long ago about a week and a half ago and then we had the push higher and then we're getting back down right here and we did up well actually we did a, about a 30 dollar uh, uh shakeout uh that i'm going to show you uh in a second so we did tap again into this uh, uh 50 sma my bullish bias is going to be moderately above 65. we waited for this all week uh, we are still waiting and we're looking to see if we break above this now when you look on the one hour chart you can see here that we had a flurry down about thirty dollars and shakeout you can see the range really well defined here so with the breakout point into the 65 and we had a prior support spot that we hold for the whole entire week into the 1816 this was just a shakeout so we're gonna have to wait and see if we start breaking above 45 or so uh, we're gonna start inching higher but my point of entry is still into the 65 level silver is uh also into the same pattern and as you can see silver has a little bit wider range so it, it has been trading into two wide uh two pretty wide ranges okay first range is coming from a weekly chart and you can see it right here we have resistance and two double bottoms right here and we broke above the resistance but we fell back into the pattern so it's still not really getting the attention that it needs and the buyers that it needs in order to progress higher over 26 dollars 26 dollars and change we could see the price advancing higher now from a smaller time frame standpoint we could see what we can see in silver is that it did a, the same shakeout and i'm gonna squish it just a little bit so you guys can see uh the range that uh we are still trading in 24 dollars and 35 cents and we have resistance all the way into the 26 dollars so 26 dollars is still going to be that breakout point that point um off of which the price can't literally it has a confirmation to accelerate higher so unless we hit that point right there i am not very excited about getting in long now let's take a look at bonds because the bonds were a little bit active last week and we're trying to see a change in the trend question mark exclamation mark so we have the low right here uh so after setting the low last tuesday we started making higher high so you can see here higher high and again test of the prior high right here and we're still trying to break above these highs right here to me this is a very interesting pattern i like it for a swing trade so uh th it's not going to be with full size this is probably going to be quarter size and depending on how it trades we can add along the way but what I'm seeing is that if the price is going to start trading uh, over 169.22 or this candle high, we could go for a short squeeze all the way into the 171 for a continuation higher, probably into the 173 and then into the 176. At this point, if we break above 176, then we have a total rotation throughout time frames and the price can accelerate higher into the 180, 184 and even prior highs into the 190s. So it looks pretty good. Now let's take a look at copper um and uh, copper was very active um okay hg here it is all right so copper has been very very active and you can see right here the shakeout so we had the same range you can see here one two three tap and we had tap tap right here uh into a minor resistance driving this is support resistance right here and the coil around and the price exploded higher so what i'm seeing here is that we had a shake from the pattern and the shake from the pattern came from the pandemic right so uh pandemic uh black swan took the price lower into 197 and the price since then uh, got back into the pattern and exploded higher so how high can it go well if you're looking at monthly charts here we go we're uh, back testing these prior highs right here from 2012 and 2013 we break above these highs we're heading to four dollars and four dollars and fifty cents and these are prices that ha have not been seen since 2011 so very very long time uh all right so um natural gas is the last uh, na uh last uh, one today 
All right, so um, this is a monthly chart, still very early on the month. Uh, if we start trading uh, by the end of the month into $2.97 above this prior candle high, then we can start initiating higher. Not very excited about this pattern, but anyway, so uh, the weekly chart is totally chopped. So we had a, a flurry down, we had a le another leg down, and then we came back up right here. So to me, it's pretty obvious right now that the pattern is trying to do it kind of like an inverse head and shoulder, if you will. So this being the right shoulder, this being uh, this being the uh, neck, and this, uh, I'm sorry, this being the head, and this being the right shoulder. The neckline would be into the $2.90, around $2.90. So to me, it looks like an inverse head and shoulder, if you will. And if we start breaking higher, we can start engaging higher. This is it for now. I hope you guys uh, find this information useful and you can use it uh, for the trading session uh, starting with tonight, actually, at 6 o'clock when the market is open, 6 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join our trading room, feel free to visit our website. It is tradeoutloud.com and go to the services and day trading room. We're happy to help every trader. Uh, we welcome traders that are beginners, intermediate, and advanced. Thanks so much, everyone, and have a wonderful and profitable week.